So, you want to shoot film with the Canon AE-1. That probably means you're going to need one of these batteries, right? Well, maybe not. You can still buy these, it's not a problem, but what it actually tells you is that it's four SR44s, and in fact, if I cut this open, it probably would just be four SR44 batteries. So, let's get them installed. That's a little bit loose. No, it's not working. You'll want to take some tin foil, rip yourself off maybe a small section, and just uh, make yourself a little spacer. Here's my pre-made demo one. It's a little bit thicker maybe, but uh, shove that in there. And you're going. Need some film, so we'll do this because it was a whopping probably not even two dollars. I think I just got it somewhere. Uh, it expired in 2015. Good stuff. Kind of feel bad opening this. Wow, that's dusty in there. Yep, smell like color film. Just get some lint everywhere. Change our ASA to 200. There we go. And we're ready to shoot. Well, I get to the start of the film. Looking through the viewfinder gives you these helpful little guides as to what it's about to do while in program mode. So we just look through, focus, and we're Gucci. About to head out. It's three degrees. Oh, it went up. Sweet. Okay, well, heck, I'm fine now. I think the Kodak will perfectly capture the golden tones of the outside right now in the middle of winter. Just in case the auto feature is not working, I should probably take something with Sunny 16. I always take a picture of these lamp posts. No different. Capture the nice orange tones of their outfit behind. Do we actually have color today? Is that a squirrel? Well, let's take a picture of that. Is it a squirrel? No, no, that's not a squirrel. See, I want to make a cheap design. Not a squirrel. This still might look interesting. Ooh, they're doing construction back here. Interesting. Gotta take a picture of reflections, right? Building a playground. That's exciting. Closed. Keep out. Oh, really? No, it looks perfectly safe right now. Too late to look at the viewfinder, so we'll just uh, shoot up this caution tape and see if it works. It's probably the most colorful thing we'll see today. that swan. Cheating way, use the digital camera for actual digital. Look at it in its majesty. If I had a zoom, I would take a picture of it in film, but I'll look at it as close as I can. Hello, creature. Yes, I'm talking about you. Let's see if they scream when I approach. I have no threat to these things. Ignore me. They're escaping. Run, scary man approaches with thing that makes noise. This shot will be done with a uh, film speed calculator just in case we've got issues. Get this to F8. Go back to program. The color of these rocks might look interesting. Oh. Do one of those pictures looking the sun. So we can 
test out the light seals with that picture. Oh, got color film. This birdhouse might look actually interesting. Red shot 20 of 24. I should put him back. Wacky duck. Let's head over here and take pictures of these pictures. Oh, yes, yeah, so we need more yellow for my gold film. It's a weird wine noise. Hopefully, it's okay. Red fire tower looks interesting. Actually, it's good. There's this recycle center and a rustic old building. Can't have more than about three shots left. Unless the film's not spooling, then I've wasted all this time. All right, let's look like on 50. Uh, that's probably good enough. Did I wind? I can't remember. I did. And that is it. That was my last shot. I guess we'll see you back at the den. All right, we finished shooting a roll. Depress the film release lever button actuator thing and rewind until it's all gone. Uh, even if you're developing at home or you are sending off to be developed, you will wind all the way until the film is input. The only exception would be, I guess, if you're reusing your film cans and you use a film, but you can use a film extractor, I guess. But regardless, it doesn't matter in this case because I cracked my cans open. When we're all wound and we're free and loosey goosey and all that stuff, pop it out. We're good to develop. So to get the film out while in the dark room, I just like to use a regular bottle opener. Pop off the bottom there. Take the film out. Normally you'd snip this excess off, but this is my dummy reel, so I'm going to uh, make this work. So you just feed it like that. And it's just a process of slowly winding it onto the reel. I also do this in gloves, and of course we're doing this in darkness, but. That's the idea. And then when you're done to peel it off, you just squeeze and it basically just slowly unravels. Now, since this is my dummy reel for training, I have to uh, wind this back up. Don't try this at home, kids. All right, pretty well. For developing today, we'll be using the Cinestill CS41 Color Simplified Powder Kit. It's a two bath process for color negative film. And I'd recommend make sure you're wearing like a nice mask, uh, gloves, and if you're really bad at spilling, uh, safety glasses. All of which are pretty accessible these days. Or most of it's included in the Carolina Chemistry Safety Set. All right, let's see what the process is. Apparently the tear strips on the bottom of the bag here. That feels about right. Mm-hmm. My source of hot water. You could use a kettle. Wow, that looks like hell. My timer is off screen, but we shall begin. So you can use just your shower rod there to hang your negatives. I like to have a little clamp at the bottom, keep it a little bit straight. For holding my negatives, I actually prefer just using an IV stand, still with a clamp at the bottom to help with film curling. And when it seems pretty dry there, I like to cut in strips of five. So this will be one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Use these as the length to cut the front. For storing my negatives, I just use regular envelopes with my organization label here. I have an 
internal ID, 200, it's 35. The date that I put on here is actually the date that it's developed. Camera, and amusingly, I don't have color on here because I'm used to doing black and white only. And then you just, after you scan, I put each one in individually. I use an Epson Perfection V600 for scanning, but you can use almost anything. So just load accordingly to whatever you're using. Upside down with numbers going that way. I typically do this in a more dust-free environment, but just showing you here. All right, let's go through the process of scanning. We'll go ahead and open up the Epson scan software. And these settings I've kind of built uh, for color 35 here. Um, so I got a little preset for that. And you know, you'd want to go ahead and set up your numbering system here. Let me go ahead and pull up my Excel spreadsheet and take a look at the number. So it's going to be roll 27. All right. And we go ahead and do a preview here. And it's sacrilegious, but what I've discovered works pretty well for color film versus black and white is just to do the auto exposure, and you're basically done. Uh, but then what I like to do is go into in each individual one and maybe just adjust the white level. So I'll go through and like, let's pick an image here. So maybe I would go, well, I want it actually to be a bit brighter, you know, clean up the dark, you know, that sort of thing. So it's not exactly true to the film, but I'm a bad person. So this gets the job done. And then sometimes you might have a color cast that you want to get rid of, and so you can just start playing with the levels. But in general, the auto makes you happy. Once you've got that done, you just got to go ahead and go back to the full screen preview thing here and check whatever ones you want it to go ahead and scan. And then you just hit the scan button, sit back, and relax. Once you're all done scanning, you now have a folder of TIFFs, or whatever you specified as your output. Generally, I like to scan as TIFFs and then process them to JPEG for actually sharing, but I keep the TIFF around in case I want to uh, changing the levels, that sort of thing, so it gives you the most color, depth, and information, all that sort of thing. It's like shooting RAW plus JPEG on your uh, camera. You're not going to share the RAWs with anyone. Of course, the fun is that this color film is uh, quite grainy, so I don't know how much it's worth keeping the TIFFs, but... Hey, we're doing it anyway. Now there are all kinds of free image processing tools out there, but because I'm lazy and still currently have access to it, we're gonna use Photoshop CC. I just use the Scripps image processor. So for black and white, I like to do 6,000 by 6,000 at quality 10, and that generally produces JPEGs under eight megabytes. Uh, so you can share it on Discord, that sort of thing. But unfortunately, color has more information and that breaks. So 4,000 by 4,000 is with quality of 10. So you just run it. And then I've got it set up to where it takes all these TIFFs and puts them in a folder called JPEG. And then you'll have the JPEG outputs. Yay. And if we check the properties, you can see that it set the maximum dimension to be 4,000 and then scales the other one to what's appropriate for it. It doesn't make it... 4,000 by 4,000 square, or it doesn't stretch it or anything weird, just limits it. But then that way the file size ends up being something a bit more reasonable. So there you go, shooting film on a Canon AE-1. Pretty easy. And even if you don't develop film at your own house, there's plenty of local places and larger municipalities that will have some sort of film development lab. Or you can actually still take your film to Walmart and have it developed. The problem is you don't get your negatives back, you just get a disc, but for some people, that's enough. But what I actually recommend for if you're getting started in doing your own film and developing, is black and white film. This way you can start off with the Cinestill DF96 mono bath. I know there's a lot of debate about it, but if you're just getting started, I think it's an easy route. And then you can get into better, more proper techniques. I'll make a whole piece on that at some point there. but. I highly recommend looking into black and white first, actually, versus color, if you're considering developing in your own house. Regardless of what you do or how you do it, just have fun. Make it a hobby and just enjoy. Don't let other people get you down about it. Anyway, have fun taking pictures. Bye.